Hello students, welcome to Alan Overseas. In this video today, we'll be learning how we can find out number of digits in a given number. Like suppose if I ask you a question that I have a number that is like 81 raised to let it be 420. And you want to find out how many digits are there in this number. Now calculating 81 raised to 420 in itself is a large calculation. So it will give a very big number and we want to count how many digits are there in that number. So how can we calculate? So that's going to be very difficult if you just calculate that number. But you know, using logarithm, we can solve such questions very easily. So in this video, we'll be seeing how we can calculate number of digits in a given number. So let's start. So here, very first we'll study what is characteristic and mantis of the logarithm. But you know, in our previous videos, we have studied few of the logarithmic basics like how we can solve logarithmic equations and logarithmic inequality. If you have missed those videos, then we are providing links for those videos in our description. So just check those links after watching this video. So here, what do you mean by characteristic and mantissa of a logarithm that we'll see first. See, whenever we calculate logarithm, like if I take here base 10, and if I just calculate logarithm of suppose 1, then you know what I'll get? Definitely I'll get 0 because log of 1 to any valid base is always 0. Well, now if I just choose instead of 1, 10 here and I calculate log to the base 10, can you just guess what I'm going to get? I'll get 1 because log of 10 to the base 10 is 1. Now if I choose 100 here and if I calculate log of 100 to the base 10, what I'm going to get? I'll just get 2. Now suppose if I calculate log of any other number between 1 and 10. So can you just guess? Let's it be 5. Then log of 5 to the base 10, how much will you get? Because this 5 is lying between 1 and 10, we must get logarithm of 5 between 0 and 1. So that would be 0 point something. I'll get few digits after the decimal definitely like maybe I'll get 0 0.4512 or whatever. So these four digits I'll get. But here before decimal, I'm going to get zero only. Now in a similar fashion, suppose if you just calculate what is log of in between 10 and 100, if you choose any other number like 81 to the base 10, then what you'll get? Because 81 is lying between 10 and 100, its logarithm will also lie between one to two. So that would be definitely one point something. I'll get here a few digits. I don't know what these digits will be after a uh, decimal point. But before decimal, I'll definitely get 1 because logarithm of 81 will lie between 1 and 2 because 81 is lying between 10 and 100. Okay, so here, after decimal, whatever we are getting is called as mantissa. After decimal, whatever number we are getting, that is called as mantissa. And before decimal, whatever we are getting, like here I'm getting 1, here I'm getting 0, that is called as characteristic. So whenever you calculate log of any number, then you get two parts. Before decimal, whatever number you are getting, that is characteristic. And after decimal, whatever you are getting, that is mantissa. Mantissa is always positive, but characteristic may or may not be positive. It can be even negative. So characteristic can be negative as well as positive, but mantissa will always be positive that you remember. Well, so here we, we come to know a very interesting result that if a number is two digit number, look one zero is two digit number, then characteristic you are getting one. For 81, which is two digit number, again you are getting characteristic one. But if your number is three digit number, look here 100 is three digit number, you are getting characteristic two. For one digit number, characteristic is zero. So can you conclude something? Yes, definitely. So whenever a number is like five digit number, then its characteristic will be four digit. So for numbers logarithm, whenever we calculate, the characteristic which we get is actually one number less than number of digits in a number. Like if your number is 100 digit number and if you calculate its logarithm, then you will come to know that the characteristic of that logarithm will be 99. On the other hand, if I calculate logarithm of some number and I come to know that the characteristic is 99, then I would say that that number will have how many digits? 100 digits. Okay. So this relation, if you remember, then definitely after calculating logarithm, checking characteristic and adding that one to that characteristic will give us number of digits in that number. So this fact we'll be using to calculate number of digits in a given number. So let's see with example how we can do that. 
here we have to calculate number of digits in a number 18 raised to 20. So find the number of digits in 18 raised to 20 is our question. And to calculate that, we have been given some data like log of 2 to the base 10 is 0 0.3010 and log of 3 to the base 10 is 0 0.4771. So let's see how we can calculate number of digits in a number 18 raised to 20. So let us assume this number as n. If I calculate its logarithm and if I check what is its characteristic, then definitely I'll be able to tell how many digits are there in 18 raised to 20. So let's calculate its logarithm. So if I calculate log of n to the base 10, means I'm calculating log of 18 raised to 20 to the base 10. So using a property of log, we know that this 20, which is in the power will come in a multiplication. So I'll get here what? I'll get 20 log of 18 to the base 10. So log of 18 to the base 10 can be written as 18 can be splitted as 3 square into 2. Why I'm taking in terms of 3 and 2? Because I know log of 2 and log of 3. So converting 18 into 2 and 3 will really going to help us. So let's see what I'm going to get. So here I'm getting log of n to the base 10 on a left side. And on the right side, I'll get here 20. And using a rule of logarithm, this can be written as log of 3 square, that is 2 log 3. Definitely base is 10, of course. And then plus log of 2. So I use a product rule of logarithm. And now you know what? Here log of 3, you have been given. How much is log of 3? Just check. Log of 3 is 0.4771. So in place of this log of 3, you can write 0 0.4771 and plus log of 2 is also given that is 0 0.3010. So in place of this log of 2, I'll write 0 0.3010. So solving will come to know that here before decimal, you get 25 means and after decimal, you'll get few digits. So it does mean that you are getting characteristic as 25. So when you are calculating log of which number n and what is n? n is 18 raised to 20. So you are calculating log of 18 raised to 20 and you got to know that the characteristic is 25. So as the characteristic is 25, you will say that number of digits in this number will be one more than 25 that is 26. So how many digits will be there in 18 raised to 20? Without even calculating 18 raised to 20, we can now conclude that number of digits in this number will be 26. I hope you understood this. Okay. Now let's see a very good question, a little lengthy question, little tricky question. And this question is asking us to calculate the value of integral, some of the integral values of B. So I'll read the question. The question here is, if log of n to the base A is alpha 1 plus beta 1. So that I'll write here, log of n to the base A is equal to alpha 1 plus beta 1 okay the next thing they have given log of n to the base b is alpha 2 plus beta 2 and then log of n to the base c is alpha 3 plus beta 3 okay where alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 are integers so this alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 are integers while beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 are lying between 0 to 1. So can you just imagine this beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 are lying between 0 to 1s, means these are positive fractional numbers, 0 point something, means these are nothing but mantisas. Okay. And alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 are what? Because they are integers. So these must be characteristic. So here alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 are characteristic and beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 are mantisas when we are calculating log of n to the base a. Now they have even given a is 3, so I will write down here log of n, a is 3, okay. Alpha 1 is 5, just look, so here I will write 5 plus beta 1 is not given so that I will put as it is. Then log of n to the base b equal to alpha 2 plus beta 2. So alpha 2 given is 3 here. Okay. And log of 
n to the base b plus beta 2. So, whatever values of alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3 given that I am putting and even I will put a equal to 3 here wherever there is a and c is 7. So, this will become log of n to the base c is equal to alpha 3, alpha 3 is 2, so 2 plus beta 3, okay. So, now just look here log of n to the base 3 is 5 plus beta 1. So, if this beta 1 which is Bantisa lying between 0 to 1, if I consider this as a least 0, then I would say that my number will be always greater than or equal to considering beta 1 as 0, number will be equal to 3 raised to 5. But if beta 1 is some positive, then my number will be greater than 3 raised to 5. And up to what I can take? I can definitely take up to 3 raised to 6. I can't take 3 raised to 6 because uh, beta 1 cannot be 1 because that is fractional from 0 to 1 without including 1. Therefore, my number will lie between 3 raised to 5 to 3 raised to 6. So, 3 raised to 5 will be 243 and 3 raised to 6 will be 729. So, from here I come to know that my number should lie between 243 to 729. And here c value is also given if you just look c value is 7. So, if I put here c equal to 7. So, from here I can say that in a similar fashion this number n will lie between 7 raise to 2 if considering beta 3 as 0 n will be 7 raise to 2. But as beta 3 is not 0 or may not be 0 it can be even greater than 0. Therefore, my number can be greater than 7 raise to 2 and up to what? Definitely 7 raise to 3. So, from here I come to know that my number should lie between 49 to 7 raise to 3 that will be 3 40 3. Well, here it is also saying that the largest integral value of number is 342 means your number can be at the most 342. So, n is a number which can be largest integral value we can take 342. Well, so from these two results if you just compare it is saying that n should lie between 243 to 729 and it is saying 49 to 343. So, if you just take their intersection, you will come to know that your number must lie between where to where. So, lower limit maximum value will take 243 and maximum value I can go up to 343 because this is saying that your number cannot be greater than 343. So, max value I can take here 343. Now, look we do not know b. And the question is asking some of the integral values of b. So, we do not know b, but we know here that log of n to the base b is equal to 3 plus beta 2. Means our n should be gr always greater than b raised to 3. But question is also saying that our b lies between where to where? a to b, a to c. So, b lies between a to c. It does mean that b is lying between a to c, but a is what? a is 3 and c is 7 means b values we can take what first option I can take 4 second option b value I can take 5 and third option b value I can take 6. Can I take all these three values as a b? These are the integral values we are talking about because finally we want to take some of the integral values of the b. So, the question is then find the sum of the integral values of b. So, the integral values of b we can consider are 4, 5, 6 but this b values 4, 5, 6 should satisfy this condition. Means suppose if I take b equal to 4, then our number should be greater than or equal to, if, if I take b equal to 4, then 4 is to 3 and should be less than where 4 is to 4. Now 4 is to 3 will be definitely 64 and 4 is to 4 will be 256. So from 64 to 256, I will get few numbers in this range. Means considering base b equal to 4 will give you some numbers lying in this range means taking base b as 4 is valid. In a similar fashion, suppose if you take now b equal to 5, what will happen? You will get in place of this 4, you will get 5 and 5 is to 3 will be 125 and 5 is to 4 will be 625. So, n values we are getting 125 to 625 and in that range we get some values of n which will definitely satisfy this equation as well. It does mean that taking b equal to 5 is also correct. Now, just check for b equal to 6. So, if I take b equal to 6, I will get my n value from 6 raise to 3 to 6 raise to 4. 6 raise to 3 will be definitely what? 216 and 6 raise to 4 will be something uh, very large number uh, up to 1200 something. So, 
250 greater than 256 and up to that 6 raised to 4 definitely there are some numbers which are lying in this range so we are getting this relation satisfied for taking b equal to 6 as well means integral values of b i can take 4 5 6 so some of these integral values will be how much 4 plus 5 plus 6 will be 15 so i would say that the right option to this question is 15 got this so it was little lengthy but definitely it's not very difficult if you think it like this so the integral values are of b are 4 5 6 and their sum will be 15 well now i have a homework question for you and this question you have to try yourself and don't forget to give your answers in comment box to this homework question so that we can definitely revert you back so that's all here on the number of digits in a number using logarithm from my side if you have any doubts suggestions or queries just don't forget to put them in comment box so that we can reply you back very soon okay so be connected with alan overseas for more such interesting videos on je thank you